This is what I think we should do. Okay. So, again, this is not the ideal presentation. It's not as good as the perfect presentation was. Strokes are firmly leading cause of death, first leading cause of disability. I think we know that strokes are bad, they're common, they happen all the time, there's not a damn thing we can do about it, right? We give TPA, and it sucks. It's awful. These numbers are a little old, but it's still true to a good extent. Very few actual stroke patients actually get TPA. And out of eight, only one will regain their function in three months. Half of them will die. And this is our treatment. This is what we rush to give these people. This is what all the hullabaloo is about. Is this something that works one out of eight times and kills four out of eight? And this is like the men's data. This is supposed to be the good data. It supports it. It's all we have. But it sucks. Before everyone out in Twitter land thinks that I'm a complete nihilist about this, <laughs> okay? when I was doing this project, when I was getting this off the ground, I was driving to school one morning, Sunday morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, I was taking weekend class, organic chemistry one. It was awful. Awful. Okay? I was going to take a test. I got a phone call from my mother that my grandfather was having a stroke and that he was being transported to the hospital that I did this research with. He was in the ambulance right then. And I was on the road. So I turned around went to that hospital and actually beat him there. I went ahead and walked back and the ER doc that was taking care of him was my research partner. So he knew that I knew something about strokes. So when my grandpa came in, he said, this is you. Because the way that you probably know, if you've been around stroke care or TPA administration in the emergency department, it's shared decision making with the family. There's very little of this parental medicine anymore. We decide what's best for the patient. We do everything we can for shared decision making. And when the treatment sucks this bad, I think that's a really good time to do it. When my grandpa came in, he couldn't move the entire left side of his body. He couldn't talk. He couldn't swallow. So that was the point where I realized, if he dies, he's better off. Maybe that's where this treatment's good. Because if we can't cure him, he might as well be dead. He can't talk. He can't swallow. He can't move. This man had nothing So I had to make the decision to give him TPA. We gave him TPA. It's a hard decision. But this is why I feel so strongly about finding something else. And I'm sure a lot of people that have been through this feel the same. If you've watched TPA give six months before this happened, I was a tech in the emergency department, and I watched us give TPA to a guy that basically turned into a giant ecchymosis. He bled to death right there. He started bleeding out of his IV lines. He started bleeding out of all the little cuts on his skin. He developed an intracerebral hemorrhage, went to the neuro ICU, and a couple hours later, we had code blue, and I did chest impressions on him. This was a guy I was talking to a few hours before. And six months later, I'm giving the same drug to my grandfather. I hate this drug. And I'll tell you, my grandfather recovered. He did fine. Lucky. I think we got lucky. Because look at the data. The drugs aren't good. But I understand that it's all we have. At least right now. And that's why I want this to get better. So, the 41 calls me a nihilist. I've been down the road. If we're going to give TPA, which is what everything's about, EMS notification 
and is shown to reduce door to CT times a decent amount. Again, this comes to communication with the hospital, having a relationship, blah, 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 all that stuff I've been talking about. It actually doubles the chance of the patient receiving the treatment. Hey, if we're going to give a treatment, we might as well give it, right? Good. But EMS has a big part of this. EMS makes a big difference in stroke care. We know this. There's data behind this. This is probably old. There's probably better data out here. But once it's in, EMS actually makes a difference. There is such thing as mechanical thrombolysis. Whenever I wrote this again, it was a big thing. Now it sucks. I don't even make mercy lights anymore. Um, this was kind of a date. This was I don't think it's true. Anyways, right? Are they not still doing it again? Do what? Well, they're not still pulling the clocks mechanically? They are doing it. Mm -hmm. But the majority of the evidence behind it says it kind of sucks too. That it's not all that great. And this goes, this gets in, I don't want to go too far on this, but this gets into more probably the repercussion injury and things like that, you know, if we clear the vessel, it's not going to be perfect. So in all honesty, as awesome as what I'm about to talk about is, it may not be any better in the day of the things, because it's going to be the same kind of thing. But if it's done earlier, which is the hope, maybe that makes it better. I don't know. We don't have to do that. So again, transcranial Doppler is diagnostic. Is This can be done quickly, okay? Now, before I get into this, anyone in Twitter land that's watching this that knows anything about transcranial Doppler is probably having a miniature stroke themselves. Because transcranial Doppler, the way that word is normally used, means, hey, I'm going to look at all of the vessels in the brain. And that takes a long time. That's someone called a registered vascular technologist, RVT, which is a special type of sonographer, does that. And they have to look at all of the brain. And there's multiple windows. They look for the eyes. They do all kinds of stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just the middle cerebral artery. That's our meat and money. Okay? It's 80% of all strokes are ischemic, and about 80% of ischemic strokes are middle cerebral artery strokes. So that is by far the majority of the ischemic strokes we're going to be dealing with, or of all the strokes we're going to be dealing with, or MCA strokes. I just want to talk about the MCA. That can be done in about two minutes. There's some data that we can rule out as the IA. I think in an ambulance, probably not. But someday, Dr. Holscher, the guy that trained me on this, he, he said we could. I, I don't know. But we can pick up the stroke. Seven out of ten patients are viewable by itself. So it's not perfect. And unfortunately, my experience seems like old people, most of them aren't viewable by itself. But if you give microbial contrast agents, 9.9 out of 10 are viewable. Well, this gets a little bit better. A little bit better. This is going to be a weird thing for EMS to swallow if we start doing this, okay? Because we're used to be able to get a 12 on every single patient, right? So imagine, three out of 10 patients, you can't get a 12 on. You just get nothing. That's a big couple of hard to swallow, right? That ain't perfect. One out of 100 patients, you can't get a 12 on. That'd be more hard to swallow. Too. But, it might be useful. When I say microbubble contrast agent, my ultrasound contrast agent, I don't want you to think of like CT contrast. This doesn't hurt your kidneys. It's not going to like shut your kidneys down. You're not going to get CIN or anything weird. All this is is albumin microspheres. They're smaller than a red blood cell. And they're filled with perfusion, which is an inert gas that really does nothing. Now, let's say you're cheap and you don't have microbubbles. You can do kind of the poor man's alternative. Yeah, there you go. You know. You take two 10 cc flushes and then stop talk, put like five cc's in one, into the other one, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, between them. Do that for a minute or so. You get this foamy solution, this microbubble. So you can do it with just saline. This is much better, it lasts 30 minutes, the saline will last 30 minutes. You can do this with us. It's just bubbles, that's all it is, it's just bubbles. See what that is? Put it on a little bit, I guess. Okay. So, this is the skull they're looking at while they're injecting microbubbles. That's the circle of Willis, MCA. 
ACAs, MCA, poster circulation, poster circulation, ECAs, days or work. It's a CT angiogram basically, and it's done with one view of ultrasound and some bubbles that you can make with saline syringes. <laughs> <laughs> I see why I'm so excited, right? <laughs> okay. Is that worth your time? Yeah. Yeah. And money. And money. You said me and shut up and take my money? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I want to see it. It's so pretty. It's <laughs> You can sell kinds of stuff with that. You don't get a good view on one side. Look at that view is on that side. Look how good that is. Holy side. You just do it down the other side. Yeah. You just go like that. Just do it again if you want a better view of the other side. But I mean, that first shot was pretty good for both sides already. Because you inject this and one side doesn't light up. And it correlates with the patient's Physical findings, you're done. You have your diagnosis. They don't need to go to CT scan because the incidence, I'm going to quote a paper, the incidence of ischemic stroke occurring with hemorrhagic stroke is so low as to not be statistically definable. That was the conclusion of one of the articles. It's been a while since I put it together. I don't remember the name of the article, but I have it. It just said it just doesn't happen. Not the beginning. Sure, you get TPA, you can do that, blah, blah, blah. You know we can do this. We can we can do it actually. But if it's at the outset, you're just not going to have both. You're not going to have a clot and a bleed. It's just really rare. Yeah. You play one more time? Yes, I can. <laughs> I can send you this if you want. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. Who would do that in an ambulance? Is that a mobile ICU? No. I said it's a mobile yeah. cat. <laughs> All right. They're going to be making fun of us now. <laughs> I'll come back. It gets better. I'm not done. <laughs> it gets better. Yeah, 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 yeah. This was for the fun part. I trained all the guys to do this. Just a little bit. Hey, this was blood vessel. Um, well, one point that I wanted to point out with this was just to keep in mind that ultrasound physics for a lot of this stuff, especially the Doppler images I'm going to show in a minute, um, if you are 90 degrees to something, let's say you want to look at the carotid and you're straight on 90 degrees to it, you're going to see no flow. And that works the same for if you're doing an IV. And the reason for that is this is Doppler. And what Doppler is looking for is something called Doppler shift. I think most of y'all probably have an idea, but I'll just explain it really quick. Think of it like a train. If the train is coming towards you and this horn is honking, it sounds higher pitched. As it goes away from you, it sounds low pitched because the sound waves are getting compressed and then the sound waves are getting extended as it goes past. That's what's generating the color on this, is that change of frequency okay, and that compression. That makes it one color. This goes away, makes it blue, and it extends out. Okay? So if, if we're straight on 90 degrees, okay, and we're trying to bounce the sound wave off the train, if we're 90 degrees to it, the train's going by, there's no difference in the side of the train to you. So you have to be facing the train, bouncing the sound waves off of it to get them to compress. Get them to expand as the train is going by. Okay? That's kind of a mental exercise. The point is, if you're 90 degrees to something, you won't see any flow. It looks like it doesn't flow. So you just have to take a probe and tilt it one way or the other. Or there's actually a little software thing you can do to do that as well to kind of make it tilt. But just be aware that it's a thing. It's probably a little bit advanced, but it's just a thing to work with. So you guys know, try to do it. There are different places. And, uh, 
And this has got a kind of a label picture of what we're looking at a minute ago. The circle of us, we want PCA, basal artery, PCA, and MCA. And we want to do the good range. So that's our meaning. That's what we've got most about. But if you got bubbles on your truck, you can see the whole thing. You can see the whole thing. You can see it. So, this is a very similar image, but it probably is more likely what you're actually going to get on the ambulance. And okay? if you were doing bumps, because this image is augmented with bumps, you can tell that because it's just like blown out. All this Doppler, it's just, just tons of Doppler. Okay? That's because of the bumps. But again, you can look at the whole head in one view if you have bumps. Very cool. And you can make it the same. It's better than my, my good, uh, the album than my that's my head. That was my own stroke. Probably going to have one. I have one or something. It's not in the brain. Probably going to have some sort of tumor or something. I don't really want to do this. But, anyways, if you don't have bubbles, which we didn't have bubbles, we want to do a bubble stuff. This is the image you're going to get. This is a lot less exciting and spectacular. This is going to be the one. What you can see here, this is the nursery watering. That's the base of the anterior watering, and it's the rest of it. Going through this way. Watch, I just don't remember what it was. It makes it all up there. But basically, that's the ACA. And, and that's part of the base. Uh, right here, you have your MCA. If you see this kind of warm like appearance, and it's making it cool, uh, cook at the end, that's about as good as it gets. But if you see a red stripe, not having a stroke on that side, at least on their MCA. That was kind of our definitive right here. A real stroke, you won't see the red stripe, and this blue stripe is huge because of something called steel phenomena. Which I can't remember, I apologize. I don't remember if that's an eponym, if that's actually after some cell's name, like Dr. Steel, or if it's because it steals the blood. But that's the way I remember the word, because it steals the blood. That's where I remember it. I don't know if it's right or not. I'm paramedic, going in a drone for everything. That's a zoomed in picture. You can't actually see the MCA on the other side. We are not doing it, but that's what you see on the other side. Remember how I said it goes towards you, red, blue? That's what it is. Okay. Uh, lots of pictures. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Just to point out. I don't know if you can see it because the lights. I can dim these lights. That's a brainstem. Right there. Two dark circles. Okay. So that is. You'll see that. It looks like a butterfly. It's a little easier to see when you're actually looking at yourself, but that's where it is. Okay. And then if you're wondering what the rest of the anatomy is. It's like Texas. Is that a ventricle? So that's a spin That's what you're going to do. If you're going to call this. We're going to use a phase to reprobe for this. Curve really doesn't work, unfortunately, which is one of the reasons below the curve rate is awesome probe. That's why I think you need to buy three. Phase to rate though, is what you're going to do for this. A whole lot of actual procedures. Alright, here's our waveforms. When you do the pulse wave Doppler on this, which is what we're doing, I think I got a picture of it. Actually, put those little brackets on the blood vessel and put it in line with the push button, and it will give you a waveform. That'd be a normal waveform, like this. If it's going into it, hitting a clock, bouncing off, and going the other way. Does that make sense? Is what's going on there? And this one's going in, it's going to peak, and it goes. And it keeps on going. Again, this one goes in, hits a clock, bounces off, and comes back out the other way. That's an inclusive one. Okay. Alright. That's what I was talking about, how it gets better. Not 
call it a diagnosis of stroke, you can probably treat the stroke with just your ultrasound machine. Uh, now this is high intensity focused ultrasound. Imagine it like a colander on your head, and every hole is an ultrasound probe, and they're all timed so they meet each other at the same spot. Now this is not what we're going to have on the ambulance. Because it's so powerful it can be used to fire brain tumors. But this is a clot in a blood vessel. And it turns the machine on, you'll see the water vibrate. See that? The machine's on. Now watch this. See it turning pink? Just ultrasound alone destroyed that clot and it didn't take it apart in chunks, it took it apart cell by cell. So that's not like the Mercy device or the number device where you go in there basically with a stick and you poke with the clot and break it into pieces. It's actually taking it apart cell by cell. Like I said, this is high intensity focused ultrasound, and that's why it does it in like 20 seconds. But a diagnostic ultrasound machine can do the same thing over a longer period of time. And if you add my full context to it, you'll learn about 20 minutes. In case you're wondering, yes, ultrasound can break up a clot. It can do it. So this is some of uh, Dr. Holscher's stuff. It's kind of old. I don't know where this is published at now. But there's a big push for a while to get TPA with ultrasound. And okay? that was kind of going to be the new standard here. Never taught on, but it was very beneficial for to get it all my bit. So you can see right here, I have a little less than 8% clock drop, maybe about 7 something percent. Ultrasound plus bubbles, ultrasound contrast agent plus the bubbles. What's the difference in that? There's no TPA here. That's pretty awesome, huh? I didn't have to get have to get TPA for this. Ultrasound alone, it did break it up. There was some weight loss in the clock. Pretty cool. Okay, so that you think, oh, okay, that's all fine and dandy. That's neat. You're doing things in a human skull full of water and stuff like that. This is an actual patient. This is one of those patients he had that uh, was outside the TPA window. So he got basically permission from the patient to do this. Just because there wasn't really anything else they could do for it. So you can see this is a positive transparent dollar. There's no red stripe going up there. Anybody see a red stripe going up there? No, it's not. Now look at ACA. <clears throat> That's a whole lot more prominent than it was before, right? Yeah, it's so prominent, it's got turbulence in it. That's what that green is. It's got turbulent blood flow. It's because all the blood that's supposed to go down the ACA and all the blood that's supposed to go down the MCA are now coming down the ACA. Still phenomenal. It's going down there. That's positive for an MCA fluid. So, Actually, you can even look. This is what pulse rate looks like. This is why, again, it's nice and dandy to do this, but the more diagnostic thing is the visual image. He didn't like to do this. Dr. Pulse didn't really care to do 
this that much because you can see it doesn't have that characteristic waveform that shows you before there's this one. So it's going to really off with that. But look at the numbers. The peak flow, peak velocity rather, 15.8 centimeters per second. And that's our peak velocity on that. So we gave the ultrasound contrast agent and held the probe on for 30 minutes. 30 minutes now. That looks very different than that. See that turbulent flow right there? It's a rock in the stream, isn't it? That's the clot. You can see the clot right there, and the blood moving past the clot now. So it's recanalized. Look at the flow. 67 centimeters a second. It was 15.8, now it's 67.2. It's an N01. This guy regained function on the right side of his body. He was outside the TPA window. No TPA was given. You have evidence that you reanalyze this blood vessel in 30 minutes using a diagnostic ultrasound machine. Why are we not doing this? Can uh, you do that with clothing lens also? That's what I say diagnostic ultrasound machine, cell okay. It's just ultrasound. No, 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 no. Massive one in the hospital. Power output's the same. This image quality sounds good on the poor ones. The power output's the same. You measure power output on these machines with something called the thermal index, tissue index. Basically, that, again, this gets into the physics, and I'm not already a mess. I'm not already a mess. Just want to point that out. Anybody that already get up that one, I'm not already a mess. But it's something along the lines of uh, how, much, how long it takes. To warm up a certain amount of tissue or something like that, because the actual energy that comes out of this is thermal. It's going to have thermal energy impact on this tissue. And so, all that stuff, that's the same between those, the large machines and the small machines. And that's the actual power that's going to be. <coughs> I'll tell you, transcranial Doppler exam mode has a higher tissue index. Because every exam mode changes the tissue index or the thermal index on those machines, it changes the power output. And transcranial Doppler is the highest power output in the machine. It's not too terribly far off from better to have that motor machine. Yes, sir. So with the microbubble contrast you were talking about earlier, the actual albumin mix, plus an ultrasound machine, what's the price between that and a portable CT scanner? <laughs> <laughs> Basically to make a point. A portable CT scanner, I guess that'd be priceless. I don't even know how much those things are. There's just, there, what is there, like five in the world now or something? I mean, there's just... There's not many of those. And the point, this is the point I want to make too. Those portable CT scanners, man, I wish I had a picture of one up here right now. It's in my other slide show. Actually, I'll be honest, that wasn't. But I was just <laughs> um, I you send you the picture. There you go. Um, when you look at those, I've seen a bunch of them. I've seen the one in Houston several times now. This isn't a CT scan, okay? This isn't like, Oh, hey, I know it's for strokes, but we could also go to a trauma and pain scan you too. No, it's just your head. That's all that fits in this thing. It's just your head. So that whole ambulance is designed to look at your head. That's it. It does nothing else. What else does ultrasound do? I'll let you this. What does it not do? That's the whole point. If we start doing all this stuff, sure, I will be realistic. There needs to be more research on it. There are larger study, larger scale human trials out there, okay? There are. And if someone wants to bring up the trial, which again, I apologize, I can't remember the name of it, but there was a trial that did show an increased number of brain bleeds whenever you used ultrasound machines with TPA. But in that trial, the ultrasound machines that they had and that they used were homemade and they were low frequency. <laughs> For anybody that knows anything about physics, when you lower the frequency on something, I'll just back it up a little bit, okay? Have you ever felt a subwoofer go down your street? <laughs> You can feel that. That's got some. Mm, it's got some physical force to it. 
these things were much lower frequency than a diagnostic ultrasound machine. What do you think that's going to do? It's going to go on their brain. It's not good. So in that study, they did have an increase in bleeds. And that's one of the big reasons from my understanding as to why some of the people who look at hesitant to look at this is because they read the abstract on that study, not the whole thing themselves, where they found that things were all made. And were very low frequency. But regardless, realistically, we do need more data before we can jump on this. But holy crap. I mean, what we have is so bad right now. And what we could be doing is cheaper, probably safer, probably, we don't know, but probably. And it seems to be effective. At least from the very early information we have now. Man, the future looks cool. That's what I want to end on that moment. The future looks cool. It's not right now. Man.